welcome to another Ultimate Fighter episode review. This is for Season 30, Episode 7, titled Crush Your Dreams, and not really going to waste a lot of time. We do have a fair chunk of it to go through, so let's just try and get through it as quickly, quickly as we can. So we start at the toughest, and Claire Guthrie has walked back in um, after the fight that she had with Juliana Miller last week, and she basically walks straight up to Juliana and congratulates her, and saying, uh, congratulates her and says how good of a fight it was, and Juliana reply basically by saying yeah it was a good fight and um you know they they sort of had like a talk about their last fight but wasn't anything too deep into it they were just like you know what we just had a good fight and i was like yes yes you did and i'm really glad that the episode started off this way it's a really nice fun way to start off the episode so i wanted to get it out of the way really quick we then have a therapy session with bobby maximus again and he's sitting down with one of the fighters in this episode uh cole chandler who is from the opposite team and he's having a talk with him, asking him how he feels and stuff, and he makes a joke about him making notes for his team, because Bobby's on Team Pena, even though he lost his fight and he won't be fighting anymore in the season. Well, he, he still could, just in case, but yeah, that was a nice little joke, and I thought it was like a, a slight subtle dig at Juliana Miller, and it did make me chuckle a wee bit, but um, that does actually lead us nicely into... The video back, uh, packages and backgrounds for the fighters. So for Chandler, he grew up in Colburn, Virginia. He grew up, I think that's exactly where it was. It was Col something, Virginia. And he grew up in a very poor family. He didn't really have much. He, he himself said it. He was a food stamp baby growing up. His grandmother raised him. And raised him until he was 20-ish, about 20, 21. And she passed away. In 2015 and he also comes up with additional emotional weight following that because he broke up with his girlfriend and the mother of their daughter as well their daughter is named chloe and she is so heckin cute and uh, yeah it's just lovely seeing the relationship that chandler has with uh, little chloe but it was it was sad seeing him leave his daughter and he even says himself that he really needs to get a handle and win this fight and then we go over to uh, Jordan's background. He was born in Nebraska. He looks Nebraskan, if I'm being honest. He looks like one of the most Nebraskan people I've ever seen come from Nebraska. Just this tall, corn-fed looking dude. Uh, like, long hair, neck beard. Okay, I never said I wasn't hypocrite, right? But <laughs> I'm getting this cut in a couple of days, so don't worry about it, and, and this as well. John grew up fairly humbly. He was taught the value of hard work at an early age, and he still continues to do hard work. He used to be a steel mill worker, actually, before this channel call, for the record, was a uh, wrestling coach at the school that he attended to do wrestling, so that was kind of all that came around for Chandler. But for uh, Jordan, he, he set up like a sort of bare bones gym named the bomb squad and he built it with some friends in an abandoned faction um like part of a cheese factory yeah i'm i'm not kidding there it's still pretty sick how that happens though we then have the training and prep and we find out that both guys are actually pretty solid wrestlers um jordan is the more well-rounded fighter of the two jordan hedenman is his full name if i haven't said that already i have now and Chandler's still having issues with his elbow. Um, he does even talk to... Um, oh, I forgot to mention for the uh, video packages background as well. I even have it written as a tiny note, sort of. So um, during... Because we see the fights of the fighters before as well. During Chandler's fights that we see in one of them, he catches a beautiful flying knee from the opponent and turns that into a takedown. Just wanted to point that out really quick before I move on. Anyway, yeah, Chandler is still having doubts about his elbow being fully functional, and he says he wants to be 100% on fight day. And he does talk it out with, um, with Amanda Nunes, and... She's fairly understanding, but then in the background um, segment, ba sorry, backstage segment sort of thing, he says that she's not fully accommodating and that she has a tendency to push the fighters a little bit sort of too hard. And I was thinking, I haven't really seen that from her before, but I get it if Chandler feels that way because he is dealing with an injury right now. As for Jordan's training, it's basically sort of the opposite of Chandler's. Um, Chandler's training was more focused on the wrestling offense, but for Jordan, for Team Pena, it was focused on the wrestling defense, trying to stuff to the takedowns, trying to use his uh, height and reach advantage, because uh, it's not that just that Jordan is a tall heavyweight, is that Chandler is, is a short heavyweight. Like, 5'10 is pretty short for her heavyweight, you know? Um, but yeah, they do utilize that sort of to their advantage when it comes to the training. They want Jordan to try and stay on the outside, try and use his wrestling to reverse Chandler's wrestling and to avoid the big overhand right. And, well, we'll see how that goes when we cover the actual fight. Now, the only other thing to get out of the way before the fight itself is that on the night um, before the fight, when they're all in the tough house, uh, Chandler Cole 
breaks out a character called Fitness Chandler. And he walks around, he's got like gym shorts, he's got like all these bands, like sweat bands and stuff. And he's just doing squats. And he does like 5,000 squats, apparently. Um, that's just something he says. And it was hilarious, because he was just like walking next to some of the fighters while they were doing shit and just doing the squats. Um, like <laughs> There was a great moment where Zach Pauger from Team Pena was just sitting down and eating food. And Chandler just gets next to him, turns over and does a squat and just like, and Zach's like, oh, come on, dude, I'm trying to eat. And that did, again, make me laugh. Again, it's a fun, silly little bit of, um, of Ultimate Fighter bullshittery, and I'm all for it. Having said that, we do have the fight to get to, and, uh, yeah, both fighters make weight, which is really no surprise considering they're heavyweights, they have a lot more leeway with this stuff. And for the most part, Chandler is actually doing quite well in uh, in round one. He's landing um, some really good uh, leg kicks. He's using his movement because he moves really well for a guy of like his, for lack of a better term, girth, you know. Um, he moves very quick. He lands really accurate looking leg kicks on Jordan. And he does actually land a big overhand right on Jordan. Like, Jordan is not defending it super well at all. And... Uh, Chandler is keeping Jordan fairly backed up too. He's landing some really good shots at the body. He's continuously throwing the leg kick. Jordan does land some good stuff. He lands a good one too. Down the middle a couple of times in round one. He even lands a good front kick uh, up the middle. But Chandler's more versatile with striking. And there's a great moment where Chandler lands one of the cleanest looking spinning back kicks of the head I've ever seen. Especially like the cleanest I've ever seen in the heavyweight division. Except for that Junior Dos Santos one. It's up there with that one that he did against Mark Hunt. You know? That was, oh, that was a baller fight. But yeah, Chandler clips Jordan with it and knocks him down against the cage. However, he's unable to finish what he started there. I think mostly because of his elbow being damaged, that might have put him off a little bit. He's not able to really get a good position and turn that into any ground strikes. But he definitely won round one with that. And like everyone thought that the fight was over. I mean, after he landed the kick, um, Dane and Forrest who, like, are watching over the fights, both shot up from their seats, like, holy shit, and I didn't shoot up from my seat, but I, my eyes did shoot upwards, like, holy shit, you know? Having said that, Chandler does manage to work through the rest of round one, and manages to win round one, I would say. And then we get to round two, and again, he's doing a lot more of the wild stuff, he does throw a spinning back kick to the body, again, throwing really good leg kicks, throwing really good punches to the body, looking a bit more gas, though, I think, because he exerted a lot of energy into that spinning back kick in round one. Uh, Jordan's landing a lot cleaner in round two as well. Again, the left right is there for him. He's landing some really good shots. He's using his reach a little bit better in round one. He's still getting hit with some stuff. I think he does even eat another uh, nasty overhand right near the end of the round. And Chandler is staying on him a bit more. He's landing some, again, just good leg kick stuff. He throws a lot of leg kicks. For a heavyweight, you don't really see that. So I like seeing it. Especially from like someone like Chandler Cole who exudes like pure Pat Barry energy. You know, and yeah, he's a solid kickboxer is what I mean by that. And also Pat Perry is one of the shortest heavyweights and also one of the funniest ever. I love Pat Perry so much. But yeah, round two, although it was a fair bit more even, I gave it to Chandler and a lot of people gave it to Chandler, right? So I think he should have won. He landed the big stuff and, um, you know, was closing the distance a little bit more. He wasn't throwing as heavily or as consistently as in round one, but he was still landing big shit. And I think he did enough to win round two. But the judges gave them a third round. And I, like, normally I'm fine with it. And I think Jordan did some good stuff in the first, in, in both the rounds. But I don't think he did enough to win. I don't see why this fight had to go to a third round. But now we have to talk about that third round. Round three soft style and both men are just in the pocket swinging at each other like mad. Both landing massive hooks. Some really good uppercuts and stuff. There's a great one where uh, Chandler lands a right hand to Jordan and knocks him down. Jordan recovers wonderfully though, manages to keep his composure and get back up. And during another world exchange, he lands a beauty of a left and then a right uppercut. That stuns Chandler and Chandler backs away. And out of desperation, you could see that he's, hurt. he's on really wobbly legs. He goes for a takedown. Jordan stuffs it, take a, takes a backside mount and lands a bunch of nasty ground pounds. Get the win by stoppage in about a minute of the third and not really necessary rounds. So Jordan Hederman wins, but of course we have to talk about it. I think it's worth noting that this fight was really, really good. However, I don't see why we had to go to a third round. I really don't. I loved the fight. It was really great. Um, both men, 
you know, absolutely put in their role. I mean, Chandler was crying afterwards because he was disappointed he lost. And I was a bit too because I don't think he should have. And some people thought that he was robbed. Dana White thought he was robbed, you know? I'm pretty sure there might be some people in Team Penny who might have thought that Chandler got robbed. Like, again, nothing against Jordan Hederman. I, mm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, uh, this result, you know? I don't think it needed to go to a third. I think it should have ended... In the second, Chandler definitely did enough to to win the fight decision for me. Uh, at the very least, a split decision, you know, which is sort of hard to do when it comes to two round fights and the Ultimate Fighter. But yeah, I don't see how this fight could reach a third round, and I feel bad for Chandler, man. I really, really do. But props to Jordan Hederman for holding it out and taking as much damage as he did because he ate some fucking nasty shots throughout the fight. And that spinning back kick was a thing of beauty. How he tanked that and was still going, I have no clue. But he did. He got the win, so fair play to him and fair play to Chandler. Fair play to both guys for putting on a great fight. We then get to uh, the next fight, which is going to be the last fight of the quarterfinals, I guess you could call it. Which is Brogan from Team Nunes versus Hannah from Team Pena. So, looking forward to doing that one next week. That'll about do it. This was another great episode in the bag. Next thing you'll see me for, well, tonight I'm going to look to put up the Go Home Show PBW vs. AVW parts. Uh, thank you to everyone who watched the stream last night, by the way. I apologize for the AVW half being a bit of a stuttery mess. Um, then again, I'm a stuttery mess sometimes, so there you go. That's what you get. Um, luckily, the PBW part rolled smoothly, and that tag match was really, really good between Blackout Veterans and Stronger Style, but you'll see that when it goes up on YouTube, because I'm guaranteeing you, anyone watching this does not watch my Twitch, which is a goddamn shame. Uh, next video, I'll see you after those, though. Uh, tomorrow, Music of the Week, and then Friday night, over the top, my version of the Royal Rumble. It is going to be fucking awesome. Thank you for watching this. Well, yeah, <laughs> I was going to do that. Then my outro, I'll just do my outro now. Thank you for watching, you're awesome. Bye-bye.